What's going on, Safe House family? Look, welcome to another episode of the Safe House podcast. You know, trauma is a very sensitive topic within a lot of our lives, and it is a very dangerous thing that most of us have gone through. And what happens when you go through those traumatic situations in life, your reality begins to get shaped around that trauma. And when your reality becomes shaped around that trauma, you eventually become the trauma that you have gone through. And so what I want to do in this episode is to be able to talk about that trauma and how we can reshape our reshape our reality within the word of God. Let's take that journey. So in this episode, I want to be able to talk about three specific things. I want us to be able to define what trauma is. Then next, I want us to be able to understand how that trauma shapes our reality. And once we understand how that trauma uh, shapes our reality, I want us to move into the next topic of how can we reshape our reality based off the word of God. So what is trauma? Trauma, essentially, I'm going to give a basic definition to it because, it, you know, it's, a, it's, it's way more in-depth definition, but I just want us to have a, just a general definition of what trauma is. Trauma is a emotional response to a traumatic situation that we've gone through in life. And there's so many different traumatic situations that a person can go through in life, you know, i.e. Um, being in an abusive relationship, being sexually harassed, being sexually assaulted, being you know, being raped. Um, you know, soldiers that have gone to war, suffering from PTSD, from the things that they seen over there. Um, you got trauma that was built from childhood. You may have had a parent that was present in your life, but absent. And what do I mean by that? Yes, they was there, but they was emotionally absent. They was mentally absent, spiritually absent. And the things that you needed that would have helped you throughout teenage years and throughout adulthood. So there's there's so many different traumatic situations that a person can go through and suffer through that can truly shape their reality and so how does a person's you know reality get shaped from trauma what did that what does that look like and i wrote down a few different things that you know people go through after they experience trauma one of those things is trauma responses and there's four different things and you know i didn't notice myself so there's four different things within that trauma response You have fight, flight, you have freeze, and you have fawn. So what does it look like when you're fighting? This right here, I can honestly say as a trauma response, I did this a lot for myself as well. This is when you become aggressive. You become very aggressive um, in a lot of situations within your life, especially when dealing with other people. And, and, And why is that? Because you may have gotten triggered off something that is, you know, that, that person may have done that reminded you of something that you've been through in your life. So, you know, instead of being able to process it in the way that it needs to, you begin to get aggressive with the person. And this can be verbally aggressive. This can be physically aggressive. This can be emotionally aggressive towards the person um, because of the things that you've gone through. You know, it is it's, it's very understanding, you know, and a lot of times people don't understand why people react the way that they react because they don't understand what trauma is or they may not have gone through trauma themselves. Then you have flight. Instead of being able to, instead of you know getting aggressive on things like that or just talking through the situation, you may have a situation like, you know what, I'm not gonna deal with this and you just leave. You're like, I'm not gonna deal with this. You, you, you and your, your boyfriend or your, your girlfriend, y'all may be having an argument and, and instead of just engaging in that argument anymore, you just leave, y'all, I'm not dealing with this. You just, you, be, you become, withdrawn from the situation next you have a freeze and this is a place where you just shut down you just shut down emotionally you just shut down mentally you just shut down you begin to get overwhelmed with the entire situation to the point that you know what i don't want to do this anymore it's sort of like that it's sort of like that that flight situation but instead of walking away when you're when you're frozen that moment you just you're still present but you just shut down you just completely shut down. You be completely numb to the situation. You know, um, you don't have anything else to say. It's just, it's just whatever. And then you have fun. And I can honestly say this is another thing that I've done in my life as a trauma response as well. 
is you just begin to start people pleasing. You do things, you do, instead of, you know, um, pointing out the situation or instead of, you know, engaging in the situation, you just try to find a way to just make the situation better so that you really don't have to deal with a lot of emotions or, you know, that, that comes from that situation. So you just start people pleasing. You just start people pleasing. You just doing whatever that person needs at that, that, at that particular time, which is not good because you don't want to find yourself in a position where you can't express your emotions. You know, you can't put yourself in a position to be understood, understood by the person that you're talking to. So instead, so instead you just put yourself in a position where, you know what, I'm just going to do whatever this person needs. Whatever this person wants me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Whatever I can do to just minimize this situation, I don't care what it is. I, I don't care what it is that I have to do. That's what I'm going to do just so that I don't have to go through this situation. Another thing that happens um, when a person deals with trauma is flashbacks. And this happens a lot of time with soldiers that have PTSD. It can be a situation that happens within their life that triggers them. And next thing you know, it puts them right back in the situation that they was when they was in Iraq or when they was in Afghanistan, you know, when they were in other combat zones. You see what I'm saying? They they begin to tense up, freeze up, you know, and, and it's it's a horrible thing because I'm a person that suffered from PTSD as well. So I understand what that feels like to just be put back into a situation that has caused so much damage in your life mentally and emotionally um, and spiritually. Next, you have, you know, suicide as well. And, you know, I, I speak based off a lot of examples of my life because I was a person that was that had a lot of suicidal thoughts. You know, I, I suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts. You know, I was a per I was there. So I know what that feels like to the point where, you know what, I don't want to be here in this life anymore. That this world will be better off without me. And a lot of other, a lot of other people, they suffer when they suffer from suicidal thoughts, it's like, you know what? I just can't do this anymore. I don't want to deal with the amount of emotion. I don't want to deal with the amount of pain that I'm going through. I don't want to do this life anymore. I, I can't. I'm done with it. Everybody would be better off without me. And that's not the case. And that's not true. This world needs you. I just want to take a minute to say this. This world needs you. People had to tell me the same thing. The world needs you. They need the gift that God has given you. They need the anointing that is over your life. They need your presence. They need your presence. You know, other situations that dealing with, you know, trauma is self-harm. You know, our reality begins to get shaped around, you know, I just got to harm myself. I got to cut myself or I got to, you know, uh, mutilate myself in a type of way just to feel good. Not knowing that that's causing even more pain as well. And then you have drugs. You know, a lot of people, they, you know, that has gone through trauma. They take on drugs. They take on alcohol because they just want to be in a different reality than the reality they're currently in right now. They want to shape their reality to something that just makes them happy temporarily. But when we engage in those, when we engage in those different type of drugs and we engage in you know, you know, drunkenness and things like that. It's really not helping us because that's not the reality that we need to be in. That's not. So now that we understand a little bit of how that trauma can shape our reality. Now I want us to look at how can we reshape our reality now through the presence of God. And I just have, you know, three different things that you know, I feel would help us reshape our reality the way God needs us to be able to see things within our lives. And I'm going to be able to read them all for you. The first thing is surrendering. Um, and I have a verse from Romans 12, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and it says this. Give, give your entire body over to God so that it may be a living and holy sacrifice. We have to be able to give ourselves over to God. We have to be able to surrender the situations that we're going through within our lives over to God. Because one thing that we have to realize is this. We can't do this life on our own. We can't. We were not built and designed to do this life on our own. Everything that we need to do within this life needs to come from God. Another verse that I have um, based off surrendering is this. And it comes from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says this. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave him gave his life for me. Understand this, Christ lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Once Christ gave his life on that cross for us, we were 
that old life, that the old way that we lived was di died with him as well. We were reborn again. And so we have to understand that we have the power of Christ living inside of us. We can't go off our own power within us. We can't. Because a lot of times we find out that we're not strong enough, we're not strong enough in those situations to get ourselves through the situation that we're going that we're going through. No. We have to rely on the power of God. He tells us, "Come to me all those who are weary and need rest." He wants us to be able to put his burden, put our burdens onto his shoulders. And once you begin to do that, a weight begins to come, become lifted off of you. You're able to be able to walk into the, the true presence that God needs you to be able to walk in and be able to see things through the spirit versus the things that you see here on this earth. Another way that we can reshape our reality is through seeking and trusting God. And I want this is one of my favorite verses, I must say, in the Bible. And it comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And it says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Look, we have to stop trusting our own ambitions. We have to stop trusting our own abilities. Because trusting in ourselves will cause us to fail every time. We have to be able to place our trust in God. We have to be able to trust that whatever he needs for me in this life is going to benefit me for the rest of my life. We have to stop leaning into our own understanding because a lot of times we don't understand situations in the way that God needs us to understand them. And with us not understanding the situations in the way that God needs us to understand them, we put ourselves in situations that we don't need to be in. We don't. The last one is transformation. And I want to read this from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and it says this. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by the way that you think. This is that spiritual transformation. This is that spiritual formation that is taking place within you. And when you're going through that spiritual formation and that spiritual transformation, this is you maturing in the likeness of Christ. This is you um, participating in the mission of God. You're allowing God to take the old you, the old way of thinking, and replacing it with something that is new. By changing the way that you think of yourself, by changing the way that you think of this life, by changing the way that you think of certain situations. Look, God never gave us a spirit of fear. He gave us a spirit of power. We have that power within us right now. We can overcome any situation that we have gone through in life. He is our strength and he's given us that strength, but he wants us to mature in that strength as well. So, you know, I, I really hope that this episode touched the hearts of all those that need it. And even those that don't need it, I hope it touches your heart. Because I want you to know that you're not in this life by yourself. You're not. God is with you. He is always present. Just like it says in the book of James, it said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Seek God in everything that you do. I promise you, you won't regret it. I love y'all.